couple of things that we have Dave Aranda every other Monday. Had him on yesterday, asked him the question about, and I did not know his answer. I did not know how he was going to answer this, but it's a question. Do you have Big 12 championship talent or a roster? And he responded, yes. He feels like they do. He goes, they just can't take what they see, which he said was explosiveness or in practice to the games. Well, there's a disconnect there, and whatever it is, the coaches, the players, or both, I don't see them having a Big 12 championship roster. I am not alone in that, but that doesn't mean that I know more than the head coach of the football team, but there does seem to be two different versions there. So Uncle Kras responded. Paul, what have we learned about bets? Uh, it's not It's not good. Even if it looks like it's impossible, yeah. I'll haze my nuts if this even remotely comes to fruition. Did you say haze? Taze. I said taze. Because <laughs> haze, like gonna, haze, haze is gonna, illegal, right? Just going to harass him <laughs> until, until they do what he wants? What a waterboard my nuts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my There's God. A drop. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> So that was. I don't Uncle think that Kras. that's. I mean, I don't think he's really all that worried about that because I don't think he's got anything to worry about. To be perfectly honest with you, I think that the comment is though uh, open for interpretation, and people who are already out to just further, you know, knock Aranda or the direction that things are going will take that as though, oh, he's saying they should win the Big Twelve right now with the talent they have. And I, I read it differently. I read it or listened to it, and I listened to it multiple times. Of uh, he thinks that they've got the talent, but here I was trying to explain this on the podcast earlier, and I don't know if everyone agrees, so y'all tell me or not. I think there's a massive disconnect in what he, as the leader of the program, and what they are operating on when it comes to like their their trajectory and what the fan base is operating on. I agree. The fan base is thinking, win now. You had a bad year last year. You made all these changes. You should be better. You should be better than losing to Texas State. You should be Big 12 contenders. And I think Dave Aranda's looking at it of like, yeah, if things go well, then they can contend now. But I think he's also speaking to the future. I think he's talking about what's building, the fact that they've got guys like Corey Gordon who are only going to get better as they play more and you know work out some of the kinks and work out some of the experience issues. And so I think he's looking at it not just now where – you know, look, they they could have beaten Utah. Like they, you know, Texas Absolutely. State was a little bit more wonky, and that was really all Texas State. So I won't even you know give them credit there. But Utah was within reach, and we're talking about them entirely differently. Now I don't want to sound like I'm making it out that they're much better than we give them credit for. They haven't shown that. They don't deserve that that uh, benefit of the doubt. But I do think we're talking about two different things. I think he sees the talent that they're accumulating and what can be built and built towards, and they can win Big Twelve titles. But I think the fan base is like. They're looking at it like right now, this team, what they've seen, and they're like, this team has no well, chance. And so that's where I think there's because, a miscommunication. Because in 19, they played for one. In 21, they won it. And and so, you know, they want that every year. They've seen that every year. They also saw what happened in 13 and 14. So there's four Big 12 titles or four at least appearances out there. And I do agree. that, But there's no Jalen Petrie walking through that door today. But there was there, – there's, there's not a Terrell Bernard – who, yeah. by the way, congratulations on the pick over the weekend. There's not one of those, and I think player, the fan base just expects those to be all throughout the depth chart. Well, I think when you're talking about uh, Jalen Petrie in particular, there's also not a Mike Singletary or Robert Griffin III walking through the door yeah. either. So, yeah. you know, yeah, there's not a Petrie walking through the door. Now, do you expect Aranda to have more guys along those lines to be able to bring in the next Jalen Petrie? Absolutely you do, and I think that's where you look at Corey Gordon. But people don't want Corey Gordon two years from now and what that might look like. They want Corey Gordon right now to be Jalen Petrie. Right. And that's where they're, everybody's operating on two different wavelengths. Um, I think he knows the pressure to win now, and I think he understands the pressure to win now, but I also think he's not just looking at right now. He's looking at what's – happening over the course of time whereas again we're looking at oh my god they're one and two they could be one and three. Oh my god they could get blown out at home against this texas team if they're not careful oh my god they might not win another game the rest of the year based on what we've seen so far and those are all legitimate concerns so i actually think there should be a middle ground you shouldn't expect to have two rebuilding years in a row um you know based on last year that should have been your mulligan and you should be kind of ramping it back up you're actually going backwards based on what we're seeing or you're just saying steady the way the second half of the year went and that's what's concerning if they were playing a little bit better i think 
you know, but it lost to Utah, things would be okay. But they've just been so unimpressive looking. Um, and this the mood has been so bleh that it's just hard to get excited about being patient uh, and, and understanding that you need to be patient when what you're being given gives you no reason to believe that it's actually going in that great direction that they are indicating that it can eventually go to. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone's like, kind of look at this you know that what's that that one little meme and i i i do think one baylor should not be in a rebuild mode but i understand there is transition even though what happened in 2021 i do not see a big 12 championship roster right now and i think anyone who thinks that like right now it, that's why what you said about what aranda's saying compared to what i think everyone wanted him to say they, they, they all. They, I think some fans would just would like to have him say, "No, we're not in that mode yet. We're not there yet." Would they? Would the fan base be more upset had he said, "We're not there yet," or are they more like scoffing because he said, "I do think we have that kind of roster," as if maybe he was answering for right now? Yeah, I think that's probably option B. I, I think that like a couple things happened to him or to, to the team that you can't go back and undo. And like the, the first, you asked him, it was the question I asked you to ask him about, did the transfer portal affect you last year? And, uh, and, you know, did you not going in affect you not only last year, but this year? I think that is, he, he didn't think so. I do. I think it really did affect them in that they got themselves in a position last year where they could have gone in and gotten some wide receivers in particular. And now you're did, talking about the summer before 2022 season. Yeah, so the right. 2022 season, right. when they could have gotten in the transfer portal, they did not. They 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 bet on their guys, and there is a line between betting on your guys and then also maybe getting in somebody who's going to help and that can help push those guys. But sometimes, you, you, and you have to do both now, I think a little bit. And if he had bet on. You know, the transfer portal and his guys simultaneously, maybe some of those games that they lost last year, they don't lose. All right, let me ask you a question. Who was the transfer portal wide receiver this year? Keytron Jackson. Has he been a dude? He's been better than they were last year, okay. but I would say that... Has he been a dude? No, not yet. Okay. What but, Aranda admitted what they did two years ago for before 2022 was they wanted to give the young players who had been a part of the system a chance to then, like... Flourish. None of them really did. And that's what hurt them in 2022. This year, it's a combination of a lot of things. It's just not at wide receiver. Yeah, the whole offense stinks. I mean, basically, uh, you know, the running game got going last week, but it was also against a team that you should be able to run the ball on no matter how good or bad you are in any given year. So I don't know how much that really showed us. He made a mistake uh, in not attacking the transfer portal more after the Big 12 title, and that led to some of the woes of last year. Um, and you know what? That was a mistake, and you move on from it. I, I don't think we need to just sit and dwell on it. I, I think that they went and acted very quickly. I mean, before they even played their bowl game, they had four commits out of the transfer portal, including Keytron Jackson. So, I mean, they attacked it. He had already you know, made the move at coordinator as well by the time the bowl game rolled around. It's just, though, it's been... Um, discouraging to see just the style in which they played. You know, if they were playing a more solid brand of football that didn't just look so choppy, um, then I think there would be less concern. But it's the fact that it just doesn't even look good. And, and there isn't a lot of like, oh, well, at least that guy's coming down the pipeline uh, that has people thinking, oh, this is a long-term hole that we're digging ourselves. It's right. not something that can be corrected in, you know, just a matter of being patient for a few more weeks. How about this? How much does Dion's success at Colorado – including his son and Travis Hunter and Shiloh, who had a pick six against uh, Colorado State. How much does what people, what people see there, such an immediate turnaround, put pressure, not on just what Baylor's dealing with, but everybody across the board. He can do it, even though he was able to bring a couple of three well, players but with But it's him. not just Dion that's doing it. It's a lot of coaches that are doing it All right, in give a me different some. way. I mean, Mike Norvell's doing it. G.J. Kinney. G.J. Okay. Kinney's doing right. it. Like, there's a lot. Like, I think Hugh Freeze is probably about to do it. I mean, like, he's going to have this year where he figures out what he's got, really, legit, you know, legitimately. And then he's going to – Texas hit. with uh, Mitchell. Yeah. By, by himself, oh, look, Mitchell. Uh, 
Texas has done it over the last couple of years where before you remember in the old days, they wouldn't even deign to take a Juco guy at Texas. Now yeah. they're fully invested in the portal. So there's a lot of people doing it. Now Dion is doing it demonstrably and with volume that nobody's ever done before. Well, I, I, but I'm not saying he's not. My question is how much does that put pressure oh, on it, those it, who yeah, aren't? I think it yeah. absolutely does because yeah. you you'll ask why you know, look, Dabo's dealing with it in Clemson. Yeah. Why aren't you doing it? Everybody around you is doing it. Yeah. You know, hey, Dave Aranda won a Big Twelve title in year two. Why haven't you done that? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we can play that game exactly. too. Uh, Dion's Dion's not just any other coach. Dion's yeah. freaking Dion Sanders. Like, yeah, he attacked the transfer portal and got a lot of great players, but. Not everybody just can attack the transfer portal, and that means that you get the equivalent of Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter and you know all these other guys that are going to be impactful or already have been. So, I mean, it does put pressure on the fact that I think everybody knows it doesn't take five years to get a program up and running, that you can do it in a very short amount of time. I think that's what Dion shows. Um, but you know, beyond that, I don't think it really applies to Dave Aranda. I think it's an entirely different situation. And um, to, to get out of this, it's not as simple as just attacking the transfer portal and you know getting as many guys as possible. All right, one more thing.